The following program does not necessarily represent the views and opinions of Reality Radio 101, its advertisers and sponsors, or its listening audience. Listener discretion is advised. Good evening and welcome to This House of Musicians with your host, singer, songwriter, and founder of the band, Inner City Outlaws, the Barry Town Bear, Barry Smith, right here on Reality Radio 101. To get on board right now, send us an email. Our email addresses are This House of Musicians at gmail.com or in studio 101 at gmail.com and now right to your host of this house of musicians Barry Smith Hey, good evening, fine listeners, and welcome to this House of Musicians radio show on Reality Radio 101. We hope you enjoy the next hour with us as we do our small part to help promote musicians, bands, and venues. Gary, how are you? I'm excited tonight. Look out. Yeah. Can you believe it? Nikki Stringfield, we have on the show, folks, tonight. And uh, what, a, what a name she's making for herself in L.A. I see her on lots of interviews and magazines. And uh, uh, let's introduce Nikki Stringfield. How are you, Nikki? Hey, I'm, I'm great. Super stoked to be on here with you guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're absolutely uh, welcome. Thanks for coming on our show. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, there's tons of videos and whatnot um, of you playing with the Iron Maidens. And uh, I know now you're playing with Heaven Below and, and some other bands you've played in. Uh, Nikki, I want to start right at the beginning. Um, when you were younger, how you were influenced by music? Uh, was it your parents? Was it an older brother, an older sister? How did you get into music? Well, I am an only child, so... Luckily, I have some pretty cool parents. So they got me into music. They were both into the 80s metal, all the rock. My dad was a guitar player. He was in a band. And, you know, luckily, I had those great influences. My mom would take me to concerts. And cool. my dad, my first guitar, kind of helped me get going. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, just, that's just amazing. Yeah. And uh, do you remember the first concert you ever saw? <laughs> it's not a very rocking concert. It was uh, Backstreet Boys when I was like 12 or 11 or something. Yeah, but um, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, when you're 12, uh, it's cool. Yeah, nosebleed seats, total nosebleed. My mom and my, I went with my mom and my <laughs> crazy, and they were like, you were so scared. And we were so high up, you couldn't even really see the stage. They were like, you wouldn't even get up and <laughs> get into it. I was afraid of falling to my death or something. <laughs> that's uh, but, hilarious. One of the first big shows, I can't even remember. Um, it was a bunch of, I went to a lot of uh, this kind of festivals. I grew up in Dallas. They had a bunch of radio shows that had a ton of bands. So I went to a lot of those. Yeah, sure. And I know you're born in Texas. Uh, we're here in Canada. I'm in around Toronto, Ontario. But my wife is also from Texas. She's from Houston, Texas. So, um, um, so yeah, cool. So you went to the University of Texas um, and you graduated 2012 with a degree in radio, TV and film. How did you decide you wanted to do that? Well, it, at the time, it seemed like the closest thing to music that I could do to go to college. Sure. I knew I was going to you know, make my make my parents happy. I was like, I'm going to do this before I go do the foolish chasing my dreams, move to Los Angeles thing, become a musician. So I wanted to do music, but I didn't know theory. I never did bands. I, I didn't know how to read music. So when I kind of went to try out uh, for the music to major in music, they basically told me that I would have no life and I would spend <laughs> all of the time. <laughs> 
uh, catching up to everybody else learning how to sight read and everything. And that did not sound fun to me whatsoever. You know, I was into going to, to see concerts and no live sound is no fun. So I decided to move to Austin, uh, live music capital of the world, so they call it. And I thought I would find people to jam with there. And University of Texas is obviously there. So um, I kind of went with that. Radio, TV, and film was the closest that I could get to being creative and the closest thing to music that I could do outside of major music. And then right. it helped me move to so. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Good for you. And so, like, you are a metal shredder. Um, how did you, when did you first pick up a guitar or decide, geez, I want to play guitar? Oh, man. I guess my dad had bought me a guitar pretty early on. I didn't really start playing it until I was 14. All of a sudden, just the music hit me. I knew I wanted to play guitar. So I picked up a Nirvana tab book. I was completely obsessed with Nirvana. And I just taught myself how to read a guitar tab, learned every song in the book. And then I, I just went from there to heavier songs. I got into Avenged Sevenfold, and that's what really got me into a lot more heavier music and more shred. Like I heard City of Evil, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yep. There are solos everywhere. I love this. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to play. So you taught yourself how to read music? Uh, just guitar tabs. That's, I don't, you know, I want, right. and this, I was like, I want to teach myself all the theory, how to actually read it. But uh, I have not got there yet because I'm doing, I'm always doing a million other things. But uh, um, I learned guitar tabs, which is pretty, pretty simple now, especially with the internet and you have access sure. to everything. Absolutely. And so um, you you started playing guitar. Um, how, how much, okay, here's what I want to ask you. I just, I lost my uh-huh. train of thought for a second there. Yeah. Um, how often, how much did you play to get as good as you are? Like, uh, did you play like five hours a day or, or 10 hours a day or five times a week? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. I guess it would depend. Um on the time period, when I was younger, when I first started, I was, I was obsessed. I, I just wanted to sit in my room and, and play all day outside of school. Um, cool. I spent a lot of time with that. And then college, I, I played a little less, a couple of hours a day. It, it, I guess it totally depends. But I spent a long time with no life, <laughs> just sitting in my room, practicing the same old scales, same old thing. Definitely Gosh. do not come this overnight. So. No, lots of hours of playing, I would imagine, eh? Yes, yes. A lot of people are like, oh, you're you're just, you know, so talented. I'm like, well, I, I did kind of come naturally, but it was a lot of a lot of practice and a lot of having no life, a lot of just sitting in my room and practice, practice. That, that's amazing. And for, you know, for, for you to be sitting in your room playing that much and, and it's paying off because like I say, you, uh, you're getting quite the name to, out there in LA. Um, good for you. So, um, now in 2012, you joined a band before the morning, right? How did that happen? Yeah, that was my first real band. Uh, I just moved out to Los Angeles. I didn't know a single person. Uh, I moved out, uh, with my internship. So, I only knew a couple of people from Texas through that. I went to NAM, the NAM show, and I met some people there. I met Schechter Guitars, and I went every day, and I just networked, and I made a lot of friends there. And one of the guys was from before the morning, so he just, I think they had just formed. They needed a guitar player, so it worked out perfect. Yeah, and how did they know you could play? Did, did did you already have videos online and stuff of you playing, or did they did you sit with them with a guitar? Like, how did they know? Wow, this this girl can really play guitar. Let's get her in the band. Um, I did. I had a lot of YouTube videos up cool. uh, when YouTube started. I I just started putting a lot of cover videos up, and that's that's how uh, Schechter knew me, and that's how they you know I was kind of everywhere, just playing little guitar solos or covers. Sure. And let's talk about the Iron Maidens. I mean, wow. Um, I just absolutely love that band. I've known about them for a long time. Um, just like the best Iron Maiden cover band for sure in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Um, how did all that happen for you, uh, getting hooked up with the Iron Maidens? Oh, that was about the same. That pretty much was the exact same time as before the morning. Um, 
the guys in the band, a couple of the guys were good friends with Courtney and Mita, the two, two of the guitar players. And um, the Dave Murray position was kind of a rotating spot for a while before that. It was Mita and uh, Mr. Alice and Neely Brosh that were playing that position. And they both had their own bands and their own projects, so they couldn't play the shows all the time. So they decided, well, let's bring Nikki in, and now we have a third kind of rotating spot. Cool. Yeah, it just, uh, I, my first gig with them was, God, it's almost been it's getting close to 10 years. I think it's been nine years now. Right. So did you have to, like, obviously you had to, but did you already know all the Iron Maiden songs? Or did you, when they said, hey, why don't you, you know, sit in with us for to check check you out or to do whatever, did they, yeah. did, you had to go and learn all the Iron Maiden stuff, right? Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, How hard I did. is that? to sit down and learn all the licks to Iron Maiden songs. I mean, that doesn't sound feasible. Yeah. If I, I knew a couple <laughs> of, I've been a, a huge Maiden fan for a long time. You know, some of the, the old YouTube videos from when I was a teenager, you could see the Killers poster on my wall. I had Killers band. So I remember when I first rehearsed with them, there, somebody asked me, they're like, so are you a fan of Iron Maiden? Do you actually like the songs? I'm like, how could you be in an Iron Maiden tribute band and not like the songs. Uh, <laughs> I, it, I joined them, or I, you know, started playing with them at the same time I had joined Before the Morning. So I was learning these Before the Morning songs, and I had to learn about ten or eleven, depends on which Maiden songs you're playing, for an hour and a half set. And I, ooh, that was a lot of, in a matter of a couple of weeks, I. Think. So that was a pretty crazy time. I bet. I bet all that playing for two bands. Um, how many Iron Maiden songs do you actually know? Oh, and I'm God. talking, I'm talking, you're shredding the leads. <laughs> I'm not just talking, playing the chords. I mean, right. Most of the songs I mean are the, the dual solos. So yep. majority have a solo. I don't know. I just, I'm learning about seven new ones. Now we're, we're finally throwing some new songs into the set. I, more than I can count at this point. <laughs> good for you so it certainly yeah. keeps you busy i guess you play a lot of guitar yes that's actually was just working on a few of the songs right before i called in crazy do you ever get like i know i get bored of playing the guitar sometimes um i know for you it's more of a I'm, i guess i'm not going to say a job i guess it's a job you're getting paid but you're also having a ton of fun doing it i mean who wouldn't want a job like that, like like a job that you have. But do you ever just go, oh man, and put this thing down and walk away for a little while? Like, doesn't it get does it get boring, or do you just absolutely thrive and love it and play and play and play? I do love it. The good thing is, I I'm not just stuck with one thing. I think if I was stuck playing the same thing over and over, True. I would get a little tired of it. But since I have the Maiden stuff, since I have the Heaven Below stuff, which is kind of its own thing, its own little challenge, and then my my own music, and yep. I've been doing a couple of collaborations with some other people that are coming out here pretty soon, it, it keeps it fun and exciting. But sure I will does. put it down. I need to watch some movies. I need to binge watch something. I need to, to clear my head and take a break. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. You need to get out with Patrick too. And uh, let's talk about Heaven Below, man. What a great band. I've been watching uh, some videos online of them and, and uh, you guys, so you're in the band. So how did that happen? Ooh, I have known Patrick for about since I've moved here, about close to 10 years now. So I go see his and uh, hold on just a second. This one. And um, I would go see his band. He would come see the Maidens, and he plays uh, with Lita. So he would play. We would end up playing the same kind of festivals, which was always fun. So yeah. I would go see them. Absolutely loved them. And then their guitar player, Lucas, at the time, decided to quit. So Patrick asked me to fill in for some shows, of course, fill in. And that just turned into a full-time thing. So you know, we, we you. did a CD yeah, called Rest of Sorry, go ahead. Oh, we did a CD called Rest in Pieces recently. I, I'm on a few of the songs. It was already mostly done by the time I joined. Sure. So you're just super busy girl, that's for sure. Oh, I enjoy it. I'd rather be busy than, than doing nothing. That's 
What's the LA scene like before COVID happened? Is it hopping down there? Were you guys playing every weekend? Oh, that's a good question. Um, when I first moved here in 2012, it seemed like there was a good little metal scene going. With it was my band, and there was a lot of other really good local metal bands kind of had a scene. And uh, the past couple of years, I guess before COVID, I I used to live in Hollywood, and I wouldn't I would go out a little bit. I mean, I really don't go up to Hollywood much anymore. We don't play Los Angeles a whole lot, to be honest. Okay, right. I know you got a gig coming up in Tucson, Arizona. Yes. Yeah. So, it seems so like there we're playing you go. Arizona Not, a lot. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Nikki. Oh, it's okay. Uh, it seems like we're playing Arizona a lot more lately. The Maidens will play at the Whiskey pretty often. Uh, heaven Below, too. But, yeah, there hasn't been a whole lot going on lately, it seems like. Well, I guess, too, well, the COVID thing definitely has put a stop to all that stuff. But um, I know you guys do have some gigs coming up. And I think when everybody gets out of this COVID thing and, and hopefully gets vaccines and whatnot, whatever it takes to get out of this, um, I think um, we're hoping the music business will be thriving again. With well, I'm sure people are dying to get out and see shows. I know I am. So I think that's put a damper into a lot of, a lot of you know, what's going on with the music, uh, live, live shows and Anyway. Absolutely. God, it's incredible that it's been pretty much shut down for a year. Who would have thought that it would have taken this long? I just hope that things are going to start getting back to normal here soon because we're all dying to get back out there and play some live shows, have some normalcy again. Absolutely. And get to and get to NOM. Are they still doing that? Do they still do NOM? Oh, they, they were. Uh, they didn't do cool. it this year. Yeah. I, I think it was virtual this year because obviously it's COVID, but right. I, yeah, last year. So still going strong with that, hopefully. That's pretty cool. I'll have to try to make it down for one of those. Nikki, let's just step back a little bit. Now, I know you have some solo material, which is really killer. So I want to play. We're going to play a couple songs tonight on the show. Um, but let's just step back a little bit and tell me about the first time, if you remember the first time you actually played on stage with a guitar and how you felt like getting on the stage to play. Oh yeah. I remember <laughs> that very well. It was just before the morning. Uh, it was my, you know, playing in front of a bunch of pretty well known musicians out here in Los Angeles and Hollywood. We played cool. at above the rock, uh, which is uh, just above the Roxy. So legendary club. Uh, well, I was terrified, but I was so excited to finally be live. It was, uh, I can't even describe the feeling. No, no kidding. Eh? And then I guess once they're, you got them on your side and they're clapping and cheering, um, um, you know, then, then it's all gravy downhill from there. I guess you, the nervousness kind of goes away. Oh yeah. It was my 22nd birthday. It was exactly on my 22nd birthday. I remember that now. That's cool. That's very cool. <laughs> no, that's that's uh that's that's amazing. So you're doing the live scene then. Um uh how did you decide that you wanted to do your own album? How did that all take place? Uh, I've always wanted to. I just didn't know, you know, what to do with before the morning. I didn't really get to put my own self into it that much. So finally, you know, my dad was kind of pushing me, pushing me, and you need to do your own stuff. And I've always loved singing, but I had never obviously done it, you know, in front of people that much besides karaoke or, you know, in front of my family. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to give it a shot. Why not? I'll do it for me. If people like it, awesome, even better. So I just started writing the songs, demoing them on my own, and then I have some amazing friends. Uh, Jesse Bilson, who's an incredible producer and musician. He actually used to be the guitar player in Heaven Below. I just took him my demos and he helped me actually do the drums and get it all together. And then Patrick Kennison from Heaven Below produced my vocals and it, people actually liked it. So yeah, I'm doing the full length album now. Sure are. It's pretty killer um, what you have out right now. Like I said, we're going to play uh, um, two tunes here. Um, why don't we go ahead and play one, and then we'll come back and talk about it. How does that sound? Sounds great to me. 
Awesome, folks. I have Nikki Stringfield on the show, making a huge name for herself in L.A., playing in the Iron Maidens. And if you guys, um, all the metal listeners, um, you know who the Iron Maidens are. And for those that may not, check them out online. Um, Check out also Heaven Below. I'm just trying to mention the bands that Nikki is uh, collaborating with and plays in. Um, Nikki also has her own um, solo stuff out as well that we're going to come back and talk about. For now, let's listen to Nikki's song called Divine Intervention. Divine Intervention right here on This House of Musicians on Reality Radio 101. Welcome back to this House of Musicians radio show. I have the wonderful Nikki Stringfield on. Sorry, guys. Oh, you, you're there. Um, you're, you're there, Bear. Right? We just want to make sure. Yeah, I just had an interruption. I got a phone call come in. I do have my phone on. Do not disturb. Sorry about that. This no darn issue. phone thing with COVID and not being in the studio <laughs> kind of sucks, but that's okay. Um, it still works, Nikki. Um, great song. Uh, 
Absolutely divine intervention. Let's talk about um, how you came up with this song. Great vocals in it, great shredding in it. Um, tell me a little bit about it. Oh, thank you. That one is actually a bonus track to uh, Harmonies for the Haunted. So that actually came on a bonus disc with my vinyl that I released. Uh, I wrote that one. I kind of co-wrote that one with Patrick Kinnison. We wrote that one. I had, I had a demo in the computer. It was actually going to be quite a bit different than that. This one's much more straightforward than what I had, but I had the chorus in my head. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out what the verses should be. It was much more slower the way I okay. had that one. But I'm very happy with the way this one came out. We wrote this one. We finished it up in about a, a day around the chorus that I had. So. Yes. And so is it something relating to something that happened in your life or is it just some songs? I know for me, some songs just come out of nowhere and they have no relation to what, you know, what's going on in my life. And other, I guess 80 percent of the stuff I write does have to do with friends, family and whatever. How about uh, Divine Intervention? Yeah, the chorus. Geez. Yeah, the demons in my head. I love horror movies. I love horror movies. So a lot of my stuff is kind of darker and you know, if you listen to my lyrics, you're probably thinking, oh, my gosh, this poor, I think somebody even comments usually, this poor, tortured girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very happy person. I've had a very wonderful life. I just like creepy, kind of demented lyrics. Uh, but this one, sometimes, you know, you get inside your own head. And sometimes I have to just turn that off and say, don't listen to these voices in your head. Don't let them bring you down kind of thing. And that's where that, that kind of came from. And actually, the op oh yeah, the very first lyric I remember, you know, I woke up in a graveyard today. We were on tour, the Maidens, in uh, Germany, and I woke up in my bunk. I I like the top bunk for some reason. I like to feel like I'm climbing into things. And I opened my window this morning because we drive overnight. And I opened it, and we were parked at the venue, but right outside my window was a graveyard. So I texted somebody. I'm like, oh, you know, I just woke up right next to a graveyard. And then that, they keep that for the lyric. So that, that actually came from that uh, waking up next to it. So that one kind yeah. of fit him up pretty well. And it went from there. Absolutely. And that's, and that's killer. And you know what? Nobody thinks that you're morbid or anything like that, man. That's what metal is. You know what I mean? That's what metal is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So. You know, Nikki, maybe. I have some I have some emails, dear. Let me read them to you here. Okay. Um, this one's from DKC. Um, this might be something that you know about. Um, it says, I got Keishin. I don't know. I got a Keishin. Gun to your head. Put together the ultimate all-time metal quintet. Who makes the roster? Um, I guess she's this person, DKC, is asking, put together the ultimate all-time metal quintet. Who makes the roster? And... Who's your favorite cartoon character? That's a that's a that's a weird email. But go ahead. <laughs> oh, ooh. favorite cartoon character. Uh, I'm obsessed with South Park. If that counts as a cartoon, sure. Probably Cartman. <laughs> Cartman, Cartman, and Butter. <laughs> cool. Uh, South Park. And who and who do you think uh, would be the um, all time metal quintet? Oh my God. Um, see. Tough question. Live or dead? Anybody? Yeah, I guess anybody, yeah. Um, we'll pick Dimebag. Jeez. Dimebag, sure. Vinny. Uh, so I've got half a Pantera in there. Oh, that's a good question. Who's the base? Uh, you kind of need time to think about a question like this, right? <laughs> yeah. No, oh, because I have to think of what kind of, what kind of band or direction we're going in. But I definitely say... Dimebag would be my uh, guitar player. There you go. Mm. So you're a Dimebag fan. That's awesome. Um, here's uh, one from Don Don Q. Don says, wow, Nikki sounds so pleasant and down to earth. What a pleasure to listen to her compared to most metalheads. So nice. Now, I don't know what that means. I know some metalheads and they're all pretty cool. But um, <laughs> So there you go. That's from Don Q. Thank you. Most of us are just huge dorks. Most, Big, most of the metalheads I know are just funny <laughs> dorks. Oh, they're all soft and fuzzy. Then they go play this crazy music on stage, and then they come off, and they're totally normal, funny people. Of course, but you know, this, you get everybody in the metal area gets uh, in the metal scene gets stereotyped, don't they? Like, um, 
Alice Cooper, like imagine Alice Cooper, uh, what the parents thought about him and stuff, but he probably has, you know, fuzzy cats and dogs, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, just because I wear all black doesn't mean I'm, I'm totally, totally mean. That's right. That's right. Uh, I ride bikes uh, with a lot of friends and we get stereotyped in that same kind of way. Here's one from Uh Doug Robertson. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Here's one from Doug Robertson. He's from the band Roller Coaster here in Ontario. He says, hey, bud, looking forward to tonight. Love, Nikki. Oh, hell yeah. I can't wait till we come back to Toronto. That was one of my favorite places in Canada. Holy smokes, Nikki. If you're coming to Toronto, please send me a message. We're going to come see you guys for sure. That'd just be awesome. Oh, hell yeah. You know it. It's been, it's been a, I don't know how many years now. I think we played two shows in a row there last time. Okay. Maybe. That's cool. I remember when you guys were here because I said to my wife, the Iron Maidens are coming. Do you want to go see them? But I, she said, she looked at the calendar and said, we are, we're already doing something on that night. That's what happened. But I'm not going to miss the next one. Yeah, yeah for <laughs> sure. We'll know in a, well in advance, hopefully, and all this COVID will go away. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. They're really working hard on trying to take care of this issue. And my only, the only way I can see we're getting out of this is vaccines. So it's going to make everybody feel a lot better. And, and you know, hopefully, uh, of course, it's going to do the trick. Um, but until everybody gets on board with that, it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit of time, I think, before that happens. But we're getting closer. So that's, that's the main thing. Yep. Seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, indeed. Here's one from Joyce L. Joyce says, hello tonight. I'm a big fan of Nikki's. What was it like touring with Heaven Below? Thanks. But it's not what was it like. What is it like? Because you're still, you're still mm-hmm. doing shows with Heaven Below. You're still, you're still in the band. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi, Joyce. Uh, it's fun. I, you know, I enjoy being in a band with all guys. I was always a top boy. So we've, I've only played, I think, I haven't actually toured with them. We've only done a couple of shows here and there. So I, I hope we actually get to go on a full tour here, maybe within, maybe at the end of the year or next year. Good for you. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I guess you're getting pretty excited about even the shows you have coming up. So that's, that's fabulous. So excited. Not wait. For, I bet you can't. Here's um, one from Harry L. Harry says a very important question for Nikki. This is something that you might again be, uh, you know, be uh, know about. I'm not sure, but does Patrick still owe seventeen dollars to a library? <laughs> what, does, what does that mean? <laughs> probably a little bit more now in late fees. I think That's it was prob- book out or something. <laughs> That's probably the librarian. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's hilarious. That's- yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's one from Mike W. And Mike says, hello, I just love Nikki's guitar tone. Can she please embellish on what equipment she uses and what are some of her tips and tricks for her sound? Don't worry, I will not try to steal it, Mike. <laughs> Hi, Mike. I actually use Simper. Uh, made my life so much easier. I used to use a Schecter head, but... It just got too hard traveling, and we mostly do fly dates, so you can't bring your gear with you. But with this Kemper, I can bring it with me. I put it overhead on the plane. It's like a little spaceship almost. It's got everything built into it. So I use uh, what profile? So it's a profiler. I think right now for live gigs, I think I'm using an Engel. I think I'm using, I can't remember if I'm using an Engel or a Friedman. I think I was using a Powerball. Um, I can't remember what profiles we used on my album, but everything Kemper. Uh, I, I use the stock profiles and I just tweak them myself. So you can copy me, actually. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You so. can sell it. So it's just I'll make sure that he gets your email and then he could see you could sell him some uh, some tones. <laughs> I, I wish I. Wish. I have a couple of friends that make their own. And you know, my friend from Devil Driver, Mike, he has his own tracks that he makes of his tones, and they sound killer. Absolutely. That's amazing. Um, now you, so, here, okay, let me read you another email from Janice B. Janice says, hello, I'm not normally a fan of metal, but I have to admit this music has great lyric and great melody to it. Usually metal, besides the shredding 
spills in horrible lyrics. Now, I don't think that, but this is coming from an email and no real melody. I don't think that either, but except screaming. Um, Nikki's music is very commercial and I love it. It sounds fantastic. Great job. That's from Janice. Oh, thank you, Janice. I couldn't scream if I tried. <laughs> I, I, I do music. I'm all into the heavy music, but there's no, my voice is so soft. I can barely even get it loud. But thank you. There you go. I, so I know you, sorry, go ahead, Nikki. Oh no, go ahead. Um, I was just going to ask if, uh, I know you just mentioned, um, I'm not sure if you said you do bring amplifiers with you when you tour. Like if you tour for the maidens, do you have amplifiers? Because I'm, 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 what I'm trying to get to here is a lot of guitar players now um, that I've been talking to are saying, I don't even bring an amp anymore. I have an effects board. I plug right into the PA. That's what a lot of guys uh, uh, are doing or a lot of players are doing, guys and gals. Um, have you done that or do you still guys rock with amps and stuff? Uh, well, I use my Kemper, so it is, it's small and it's, it's not exactly an effects board, but it is technically an amp, but I bring it with me because it's, it's small, it's compact. And I can I can plug in direct to the PA. I don't need a cab. I don't have to have anything really. But I, it does sound good to have a cab behind me. Uh, Courtney still, if we do fly get, uh, fly date, she still uses the back line. So she still has, you know, whatever. I forget. I think she forget what she uses for back line. I don't know. I don't know if it's Marshall. I just basically got tired of getting to a gig and there's. You never know what amp is going to be there. And then you have to tweak it and you don't have your tone. You know, right. the amp will be busted. You know, any number of problems that you can list. Absolutely. And since I've had, you have your exact tone no matter where you go. You just plug in and you're ready to go. It makes life so easy. Yeah, for sure. There'd be nothing worse than going from gig to gig, like you say, with a different amp and getting the, you're not getting the sound that's the Nikki Stringfield sound. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's rough. We'll be like, what, what, what's going, what's going on? Oh, there's a, there's a tube bust. There, you know, there's a tube out, or there's a speaker busted, or there's something wrong with the amp. No, none of those problems anymore. No, nope, that's true. And there's nothing worse than that when you're all um, hyped up and, and excited to get on stage and play. And then you get, you know, a message saying, oh, well, they got to they got to run to the store and get a, a, a tube amp or something that would that sucks. Yeah, we've definitely had some of those moments. Uh, yeah, that's that's rough for sure. Nikki, tell me who you listen to now um, when you're at home doing what you do practice while well, we wouldn't be practicing, but doing whatever you're doing around the house or if you, you're listening to your I won't say Sony Walkman. Um, Nikki, I don't even I'm not even sure if you know what a Sony Walkman is. We're pretty old, me and Gary, but um, it's that's the first thing that came out with a little tape recorder cassette and you put the cassette in and put your headphones on a walk down the street. But what do you who do you listen to now? now when you uh when you're out and about or doing stuff at home oh you know it, it, it totally depends usually i'm listening to stuff to learn it so i don't get to listen to much just to have just to enjoy it but what's new i haven't listened to a whole lot of new stuff um new system of a down came out that was killer i've been listening to obviously a lot of events sevenfold uh papa roach then I throw it back a lot. I love the grunge music. I listen to a lot of Alice in Chains. Cool. Uh, lots of Maiden lately. Been listening to some of the albums I haven't been listening to much, or that I haven't listened to much for Dance of Death and all that. Uh, that's kind of what I've been listening to lately. Good for you. Oh, that's great. And so are you strictly a rock girl or do you listen to James Taylor or Jimmy Buffett or any kind of country music? I mean, here I am asking, um, you know, one of the best shredders on the planet if she listens to country music. But some people are closet country music people or James Taylor people or Jimmy Buffett. Do you listen to anything like that or is it strictly uh, kind of heavy metal? No, definitely not strictly metal like as I, as I said one of my my first concert was Backstreet Boys so I still rock the hell out of some Backstreet Boys. <laughs> um, you were 12 yeah. so that's okay <laughs> I still put that on today uh, you know I love Shania Twain at least some cool. of her old albums I'm not a big country music fan but there are some some songs I'll be like you know what that's a good song that's a good song 
I wouldn't go out of my way unless it's like not clean. That's kind of what I grew up with. Uh, see, I love Lady Gaga. Um, some I don't really listen to. If there's something like all that Cardi B stuff, whatever, I haven't even heard that song. Uh, I'm not even going to mention it. But I don't really listen to a whole lot of anything else, kind of besides rock and occasionally some of my guilty pleasures that I just mentioned. Yeah, sure. So now, you, you again, folks, uh, Nikki has her album out. Um, I believe you have the, this is it, a complete album out, Harmonies for the Haunted? That one's an EP. So it's got five songs, and then there's a little bonus thing to that. There, There's three more songs. Um, I'm working right. on the full list right now. Yeah. Good. And so the full... Um, just so that I'm not confused, the full uh, it's the full album. You're going to add more songs, and it's still going to be called Harmonies for the Haunted, or is that just the EP name, and you're going to have a new name for your album? Yep, it's the, that's just going to be the EP, Harmonies for the Haunted, and I'm working on a new full length album, ten new songs. Good for Lots you. Of new- yeah. How did you come up with Harmonies for the Haunted? Oh, that was so hard to come up with that name. I went through a ton of names. I was so, I had no idea what to call it. And that just popped into my head. Harmonies, Haunted. One of the songs on the album is called Haunted. So it just had a nice ring to it. You know, creepy ring to it. So I decided, <laughs> let's, let's go with that one. Sure. And you had to have your kind of um, horror movie theme in there with Haunted in the, in the title. So that's great. Yeah. Um, I let's... know I but... Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I, I have no idea what the next one's going to be called. I'm sure it'll have a horror movie um, theme to it. I hope. Yeah. No, <laughs> me, it'll be it's creepy. Good for you. Um, okay, so why don't we do this, folks? I have Nikki Stringfield on the show. Um, Iron Maiden, Shredder, uh, have the plays in heaven below. Played with a couple of other metal bands um, out in LA. Um, why don't we go ahead? So, uh, what I want you to do, folks, we're going to play another song, but I want you to check Nick, Nikki Stringfield out online. She's online. Nikki and Patrick do a lot of acoustic stuff, and I don't think I've ever seen anybody shred on an acoustic like you guys do. It's just absolutely amazing. Good for you guys. I love it when you guys are doing harmonies on the leads on the acoustics. Thank you. I I was not even really playing acoustic before this lockdown. This is all kind of it's all kind of a new thing to me, a new new kind of monster, but I love it. I love how raw and just raw and emotional it is. And you know what? It, it, people would think, wait a second, these guys are playing metal on acoustics. Not for me, but it really is amazing the sound that you guys have together sitting there playing these two acoustics. Um, it sounds killer. I mean, it does fit the metal genre, those playing acoustics in it. It really does. Oh, thank you. We've been really trying to figure out what songs to play that people would not expect, but songs that people love, but you would not expect to hear on acoustic. Like I'm, I've already got a few songs in mind that I'm like, this song is killer. It's heavy. Now let's make it acoustic and shock everybody with it. Like that's what, that's what I'm really enjoying. Absolutely. And when I saw it, I just then, you know, I've always loved acoustic guitar. So to hear you guys playing that well together, um, especially the harmony leads and stuff is just uh, you guys are incredible. That's for sure. Um, Let's go ahead, Nikki, and play this song. The Devil Comes Down off of your EP Harmonies for the Haunted that you released in 2019. And then we'll come back and talk about the song a little bit. If that's good with you. Let's do it. Let's do it right on, folks. Again, I have Nikki Stringfield on the show. Check her out online. There's lots of videos of her playing. You will not be disappointed. She is an amazing metal shredder. Right now, we're going to hear one of her songs called The Devil Comes Down off of her EP, Harmonies for the Haunted, on this House of Musicians radio show right here on Reality Radio 101.
folks, welcome back to this House of Musicians radio show. We have Nikki Stringfield on the, tonight's program, and we just heard The Devil Comes Down from her EP album, Harmonies for the Haunted. Nikki, talk about The Devil Comes Down. I'm interested to know where that came from. Oh, that one, that one, the road itself, I was sitting on a plane waiting to take off, and the lyrics just kind of started pouring out of me. I, I heard everything heard how everything should be i got as soon as i landed i didn't grab the guitar had to figure out the riff that i heard in my head and that one just came together so fast went and demoed it out and at first that one was going to be more of a straightforward song but with my producer jesse he gave it that groove he made it more with the drums and the claps and everything he made it much more kind of groovy more radio friendly cool. um yeah, of course, the lyrics, bad relationship, typical, you know, typical <laughs> bad relationship, made me mad. You know, so made made me mad. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, you know, at least I got a song out of it, right? So Hey, at least you got a, something good from something bad, so that's amazing. Exactly. exactly. So that one's more, definitely the more popular song on the album, more straightforward. There's several of the other ones have way more guitar i know people were kind of confused they're like i didn't know you sing for one and it's not a lot of shredding but i tried to really write the solos and everything to fit the song i didn't want to try to just fit shred in just for the sake of guitar shred so there's several other songs on the album that are way more guitar driven guitar oriented yeah, and you can do whatever you want. I mean, nothing has to be shredding all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the beauty thing about yeah. being uh, being creative is that you can absolutely write and sing and do whatever the heck you feel like when you're doing it. So, um, yeah. Um, now, I know, I know, Nikki, that you've been all around the world touring. Um, tell me some of your favorite places or your most favorite place that you've toured, that you've been to. Oh, man. Well, my bucket list was New Zealand because I'm a huge Lord of the Rings, you know, nerd. And so getting to New Zealand was a, a dream come true. Um, I actually got to fly out a few days before the shows and travel and see stuff. I got to go see like the Shire and everything. And it's very rare to get to see some of the places when you go because it's usually just you're on the bus or in the in the van and you don't really get to see much of the country. But probably one of my other favorites is Germany. We usually go to Europe once or twice a year, and we play all over Germany. And I really miss it. It's, it's been, we were supposed to go there, I think, early last year. And uh, it's just, it's weird not, it, it kind of feels like a second home at this point. In Germany, the, the audiences are, are amazing. South America has some of the craziest audiences as well. Please elaborate. Ooh, how do you, How um, do you mean? Oh, by crazy in South America, I mean passionate. Um, yeah. They they just love their live music. They they just go crazy over it. And I think we played um was it Colombia or Bolivia? And I mean they they acted like we were actually like Iron Maiden. You know they would they would follow us from the hotel. They'd start they'd find us at the hotel. They'd follow us to where we were eating. And it was it was like they they'd be at the airport when we would get there. It, it was just surreal. It was like, you know, we're not really Iron Maiden, right? But <laughs> they love the live music and and they're just so passionate about it. They're, you know, the shows are always packed. It's 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 just awesome. Yeah, and you guys deserve that. I mean, you guys work hard. You're all great musicians. The Iron Maidens I'm speaking of right now, um, great musicians. You guys work hard and you put on a fabulous show. Um, I think one of the, I'm, I'm not necessarily a huge, um, I don't shoot me, Iron Maiden fan, but my wife and I went, uh, I know, don't kill me. Uh, my wife and I went um, two years ago, I think, to Toronto and saw Iron Maiden and I was blown away by their show. It was just amazing. Yes, you cannot deny that. God, even even now, they put on such an amazing show. It's it's incredible, and it's hard to even it's hard to live up to that too. It's hard to live up to to recreating an Iron Maiden show because the fans are Maiden fans are like another. They're on another level. They're so passionate about Maiden. You know, mm-hmm. they know, know every lyric. 
So it's the, the pressure is on to uh, really deliver the, the Iron Maiden experience. Oh, you guys don't need to worry. Um, I've seen lots of your videos and stuff. You guys do a fabulous job. You do not disappoint the fans, that's for sure. Um, Nikki, tell me one crazy, my favorite part of the show, some crazy story that's happened to you, maybe somebody famous that you met or something that's happened on stage or whatever. Just tell me a crazy story. Oh, crazy story, crazy story. You know, these happen and then I forget about them and they randomly pop into my head. I guess. One of them, we would we were on uh, for it was an off day. It was the first time we went to Amsterdam, in Europe, and we took a couple of uh, taxis or whatever I think out into the city. Our hotel was a little ways away, and um, our driver was a a German guy named Marcus, and thankfully he was there and he could kind of speak some of the other languages. I think Netherlands is Dutch, but we had a had a blast. You know, had had a lot to drink, stayed in in Amsterdam all day for the first time, and we went back to get our train tickets. And you know, none of us really speaking the language, and we're all tired, all probably drunk at that time. You know, that um, well, the train is not running anymore. We're like, oh, what? Do, how do we get back? Where? How do we get back to the hotel? And so we try to get a cab. I don't think that worked. We it was freezing cold. I think we ended up walking all the way back wow. to the hotel. And by that time, the hotel was closed as well. I don't even remember how we ended up getting into the hotel. Wow. Lots of things lots of things that are like, did that just really happen? <laughs> um, lots of things like that. Yeah, no kidding. Lots of that just really happened. Yep. Um, uh, what an amazing career you've had so far. I mean, you're still very young, so you still have so many years ahead of you. Uh, the good thing about the music business is you keep going till you drop. Uh, I find there's people that just keep on playing and, and play forever and then get in their 60s. They're still playing. So, I mean, you have so much life, uh, you know, ahead of you and that you've done so such amazing things already so we wish you the best but before we go there's a segment of the show i like to do called well gary what do you think wow what do i think do you have a couple hours you know <laughs> I, i'm a big fan now i have to admit nick um you know i i love harder rock i'm not really a metal fan but i love hard rock but man i'm telling yep. you like that emailer said it the commercial ability of these songs it's got such great melody to it great lyrics and you know your voice is beautiful for for what you're doing for that i'm just not stroking you on this it sounds amazing and the songs are well put together and as a producer you know i meet a lot of people and i have throughout the years you are such a pleasant person to do an interview with there's a lot of oh, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot, and Barry will tell you this, and we won't mention names, but there's a lot of pompous a-holes that, you know, they think we're doing them a favor, and basically we're just trying to promote their craft and their projects, and we always appreciate people coming on this show, but you are such a pleasure to talk to and interview, that's my opinion. So there you go. Oh, oh. I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm I'm just so happy to have my music out there and to have people listening to it and checking it out. I mean, that means the world to me, and and I appreciate you guys helping get music out there. You know, it's hard to it's hard to do nowadays. You have the internet, but it's also oversaturated with a million other musicians. So that's right. To, to have people enjoying my music, that that means the world to me. So thank you guys. Oh, well, you know what? A small town Texas girl grows up and, and, and learns, you know, plays guitar when she's young. And now you're doing all this stuff for yourself. Nikki, we wish you the absolute best. So I'm going to keep following your progress and, uh, excuse me, and we're dying to wait for your, uh, we're going to wait for your album to come out. We're dying to hear that. And uh, thank you so much. We can't thank you enough for being on the show. Hopefully we can, I'd like to get you back on the show maybe in a year or two from now and see what you've done from now to okay. then. Nikki, thank you so much. Nikki Stringfield, thank you for being on our show. Thank you guys so much. And hopefully we'll see you in Toronto soon at a maiden show. Fingers crossed. 
Absolutely. We'll be there if you're here. Thank you so much. And to the listener, I say thank you for being here and always dance and sing and let the music bring your soul to the surface for all the world to see. Until next time, have a shuffle your feet kind of week. And good night. You've been listening to this House of Musicians radio show on Reality Radio 101. Thank you.